In a society where dark skin is often seen as inherently aggressive and sassy, has long been the media's descriptor of choice for Black women. Softness is an act of rebellion. It's a form of reclaiming the delicate femininity that has long been thought of as exclusive to white and Asian women. White society's attempts to exclude Black women from femininity and the connotations that come with it, cuteness, sweetness, innocence, has been systemic and integral to the oppression that began in slavery. Like Black men, enslaved Black women were dehumanized. Stereotypes of Black women, that they were loud, lewd, rude, ugly, barbaric, and sexually promiscuous, were used to justify the atrocities committed against them. The type of femininity that has been afforded to Black women is more often promiscuous and suggestive. Black women and girls are the victims of a hypersexualized Jezebel stereotype that leads to more instances of sexual assault and violence while also making us less likely to receive support for these traumas. The soft Black girl pushes back against these harmful stereotypes in a way that manages to be both bold and revolutionary. Despite the tranquility of the aesthetic, It combats images of overly aggressive, sex-driven Black women with the gentleness and innocence that the world at large never associates with Blackness. There is a strength in choosing to be soft and gentle in a world that attempts to elicit nothing but hardness and stoicism from you. In this way, Black women continue to defy the limitations and bounds of racism with grace, beauty, strength, and a lovely pastel palette. The emotional suppression of trauma that Black women experience is a key component of the strong Black woman character. Having a stiff upper lip about all we endure has long been the model of resilience passed down through generation. But in recent years, there has been a shift. As more Black women are embracing therapy and attending to their mental health, it has become increasingly important to break cycles of trauma through engaging directly with emotion in an open and vulnerable way. Enters the soft Black woman. The emergence of the soft black girl gives us the space to shed the weight of the strong black woman expectations and display a full range of emotions. A number of artists, style icons, and black owned brands have stepped up to the champion, the soft black girl in the current visual landscape of media. Popular Dutch Afro-Caribbean artist Seal, co-creator of Blacktober, depicts adorable characters of color in cozy and comfortable settings. Geneva Bowers, better known as GDB, is another popular Black artist whose work captures the emotive beauty of soft Black girls with illustrations that range from light and joyful to witsful and somber. This aesthetic clearly resonates with a lot of other Black girls and women. The feeling it evokes is similar to the positively pink style of Jacques A, founder of Adorned by Chi a brand that was created to capture the desire of Black women to depict softness and light through clothing and accessories with slogans like Cosmic Cutie and Let's Cry Together. In a past Zora interview, IA talked about her motivations in creating the brand. I've always liked a feminine magical aesthetic, but I never saw Black women represented. It was always fair-skinned images. I wanted to make something where Black women could be beautiful, feminine, and magical. While a pretty pastel look draws the attention, the idea of the soft black girl goes beyond visuals. It's also about being able to express vulnerability in a world that expects all black women to be strong and forever resilient. So when I first read the Zora article, Soft Black Girls and the Reclamation of Black Femininity, I had to reread it a couple of times because I really wanted to make sure that I was taking in this information. So I'm a young, (coughs) dark-skinned, black woman living in America, and I have shaved hair. So my image actually is often the image used of um, a martyr or a very aggressive political um, black woman. You'll see images of a woman who looks like me on a lot of posters for activism and civil rights, basically anything that has to do with the defiance, right? Not listening, going against the status quo, masculine. An image like mine is used for that kind of propaganda. And I'm calling it propaganda because it is propaganda. It is a programming. It is a conditioning. And, you know, almost no, not even almost. Literally at every place I probably have ever worked, um, I've always been asked what my views are on things, right? People really like to ask me political questions. And I know it's because of the way I look. Because we won't be having a conversation about politics, right? I'm not working in 
very political spaces, so to speak. Yes, the personal is political, but y'all get what I'm saying, right? I'm not like working on anyone's campaign or anything. So it's like, why are we talking about politics? Are we supposed to be selling some hand creams, right? Like I'm talking about like from my most, you know, entry level of type job to more corporate settings, whatever. Somebody always wants to know like my political opinion. And at first I used to really lean into these conversations because I do consider myself a quite political person. I'm not as probably deeply involved and invested in politics and the conversations around it, but I'm paying attention, right? Um, But I, I sort of stopped leaning into those conversations because when I started listening more to the kind of questions I was being asked, I realized, oh, people are assuming my political affiliations based off of my appearance. People really think that they know the way that I will lean because of how I look. And I know that we all have our own internal biases when it comes to judging people based off of how they look and we make a lot of assumptions. But my specific look has been so popularized and polarized. It's so, um, you know, it's tantalizing. People want to people wanna know what the dark skin, like bald head girl thinks. Like, what does she think? Is she going to be militant? Because... My look is understood as militant. Like, it doesn't matter. I could dress myself up in the most pinkest, fluffiest, you know, of dresses. And people will still, (laughs) will, you know, they'll see it as dressing up, right? They'll see it as playing a role in not truly who I am. And I've realized that for a long time, especially in the way that I've been presenting myself, I haven't really leaned into the side of me that is pretty pink pastels, coral, you know, sparkles. Um, Ever since I was little, I just never leaned into that side of myself because everywhere I looked, first of all, I didn't see anybody that looked like me um, doing that. So I thought that subconsciously, I thought, well, that's not for me. I'm not supposed to really be into that, right? Whatever. Um, But as someone who's deeply invested in anime and manga, Um, literally invested my own money to have myself designed as a anime and manga character and continuing to now invest my own money to really actually develop an anime and manga character, well, a series, like a group of characters of black women. Um, That's a genre, right? That historically isn't representative of myself, but you know, when it comes to that whole anime and manga conversation about how black people are represented, I'll say this. Japan is mostly Japanese, right? So I'm not going to expect them to get their depictions of black people correct, but I would expect them to be like not racist depictions, you know? Like, of course, I'm not going to look for Japan. I'm not going to look to Japan for representation of black people. Of course not. But it's like, if you want to include a black character in your anime and manga, then yeah, the responsibility does fall on you, Japanese creator, right? to make sure that that character is not a caricature and is not offensive. Like, yes. And you can't say, well, I've only ever seen the depictions. Okay, well, educate yourself because common sense will tell you clearly every single person not like that. Because if, say, a black creator, right, is making their own anime or manga or comic or even just a TV show, live action or not, and they want to have a Japanese character, if they just lean into the stereotypes of Japanese people, y'all be offended. So it's like, come on, let's just use our common sense caps. Use our common sense caps. But the soft black girl is something I really want to start discussing here on my channel because I do have my Black Women in Luxury series, which is nowhere near done. It's about seven more videos left in that series. But I wanted to start this series as a companion series to the Black Women in Luxury series because... They kind of go hand in hand, and I don't, I don't think they're really being understood and examined enough. And the reason why I also come to you guys by reading an article first and offering my own response and then research is because I think it's super important that we read first, that we study first, that we look at what other people are saying to help inform our opinions or point us, you know... In, in different directions. I'm not even going to say the right direction. Just point us in different directions for our own research and understanding and understanding because a soft black girl is a delicate topic. And I was having a conversation on Twitter with the account at soft black girls about some of my observations 
of black women in media because Soft Black Girls made an excellent, excellent, excellent thread about black women and black girl tropes in media just over the years and how they've kind of been revamped and how they've been changed and how some have been like totally removed or whatever. And I was talking about how I felt that, you know, little girls, little black girls in media now aren't allowed to just be like little girls anymore. Um, <clears throat> and then someone asked me, you know, like what, what does a little girl, you know, look like to you? Or what is a feminine little girl to you? And I, I really want to kind of not move away from the language of like a feminine little girl. Like femininity is whatever it means to you, baby. Like your definition of femininity is your definition. I cannot tell you how to be feminine, but we also do understand that there is right a definition for femininity. And there is an understanding of what femininity is. It's not saying that's all it is, but like, you know, sometimes I think we're, <clears throat> to be frank with you all, sometimes I think we get a little too um, <clears throat> broad in how we want to define things because we want to all put our individual definitions in there. And it's like, I respect your individual definition and everything like that, but the definition is this. And it's not saying the definition is right or wrong, but it's been defined this way for a reason, right? That means that is the widely <laughs> accepted and understood, right, narrative of feminine. So whatever, but back to my point. Yeah, I was just saying that I don't feel like the like little black girls get to be little black girls in media anymore. And I was like, dang, you know, I was looking back um, because I love television. I love film and I watch a lot of things. And I was looking back and I'm like, you know, I feel like little black girls in television shows from the 70s and the 80s and the 90s were just little black girls, you know? And I'm talking about, like, little black girls. Like, I'm not talking about the teenager character, the young adult character. I'm talking about the little black girl who's supposed to only be probably, you know, like, 7 to 12 years old, like, around that age range, right? She wasn't, like, a freedom fighter. She wasn't political, she was just a little black girl. You know, every now and then, okay, she would have to experience something because she's still black. So like, all oh, right. And she would, you know, be taught a lesson and understood how the world works. And okay, that's a learning moment because media is also used to educate and inform, inform us and also to program us. So I understand that. But she was just a little black girl. And now I feel like little black girls in media are everything. You know, this character is eight years old, but she's talking about a Democrat and a Republican and NATO and all of this stuff. And I'm like, that, I don't know no seven-year-old little black girl like that. Not saying she doesn't exist, but it's also like, do we want to be programming our little black girls to think that they have to shoulder the weight of the world right now? They're seven, they're eight, they're nine, they're ten, like... Stop. <laughs> like black children only get to be children for so long, you know, because we most of us, you know, will have this experience that reminds us or teaches us that we're black. And I don't think that that moment has to come so quickly in media. And I think that um, 20, 30, 40 years ago, that moment really wasn't coming very quickly in television or it wasn't coming at all. You know, little black girl knows she's black, but she's just a little black girl. She gets into like little kid trouble. You know, she's just a little girl. She likes her hobbies. She plays with her toys. She asks little kids questions. She gets in little kids trouble. She's about her business. They leave the more political type you know, conversations to the teenager character or the young adult character. But now I feel like they are trying to put the young adult character and the teenage character into the little black girl character. And I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't think it's necessary. Um, And I actually think that it can be damaging because now what you're doing is you're telling a little, little child right? A child under the age of 18, um, really a child under the age of 13. Like you're telling this child that she now needs to be politically and socially aware of the world in such a way where she has these very strong black or white, you know, um, views on things and she has to make up her mind and make choices now. And I don't, you know, when I was 12, 
nine, you know, ten, eight. I wasn't thinking politically. <laughs> like, I wasn't, you know, I was starting to learn things and understand things and discussions were being had, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't planning a rally. And it's not to say there's anything wrong with that. I think if that's a child's nature, if they're naturally um, inquisitive about that kind of a stuff, cool, about that kind of stuff, cool, fine. Like totally embrace that and nurture that within that child. But I don't think that's what television is doing. I think television is trying to program that within the children. And I don't like that at all. I don't think we need that. I don't think it's necessary. Y'all can let me know your comments down below. But I wanted to end this video starting that conversation too about black girls in media. Because I think there was a time where they were just like, just little black girls. They were soft. They were little black girls. We had our Rudy Huxtables. You know what I'm saying? We just had our little black girls. Um little black girl even number five right that's early 2000s um from Kona's kid next door like she was just a little black girl she was rambunctious you know she had fun she got a little trouble but she wasn't you know trying to make any political statements but now now you know even the animated character little black girl is trying to make political statements and it's like we don't need that to, uh, uh, you know, look, my six-year-old little cousin don't need that right now. What she needs is to see a little black girl having fun, being happy, learning new things, you know, and growing up. She doesn't need to see her making any political decisions. She's six years old. Like, you know, like, I, we, don't, we don't need that right now. So please let me know your thoughts down below when it comes to the soft black girl movement. What have your observations been? And what are some things you think we should start paying attention to when it comes to this um, trend? And I don't think there's anything wrong with calling it a trend. I don't think that's like derogatory or anything. And it's a trend. It's something that's trending right now. It's something at the forefront of our minds and media right now. So it's a trend. That's it. I'm gonna get thoughts. I'm gonna get thoughts. I wanna hear what the girls are thinking. I wanna hear what the girls are thinking. Um, and thank you for listening and tuning in today's video. I deeply, deeply appreciate it.